Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to go over an F report that came out from the FTC that I tweeted at Fight to Repair for those who want to follow me on Twitter. I feel so dirty saying that, but I do have a Twitter now for the, for, for the better good. It's not because I like Twitter. Uh, and this is a very interesting report. This is over 50 pages, so I'm not going to read the entire thing because that would probably bore you to tears. What I'd like to do is read the elements that I found to be particularly interesting, and then we can go over the entire thing later. So one of them is where it says, tying is illegal, where the effect is to impair competition and harm consumers in the market for either tying the product or the tied product. For example, an illegal tying claim might allege that a manufacturer unlawfully tied the availability of parts to the purchase of its repair service, aka me not being able to buy an ISL 9240 from Intersil unless you're also paying Apple $1,500 for the repair service to have this $5 chip replaced. A few other parts that I found interesting were where they talked about safety and security. So there was one part that kind of scared me in this report where they said that a manufacturer's explanations for aftermarket restrictions are almost always relevant to the court's assessment of the overall competitive impact of a particular practice. For example, manufacturers may assert that restrictions on competition and aftermarkets are necessary for privacy, data security, efficient design, and blah de blah de blah So at that point, I thought, oh, crap, that's not going to end well for us. And then you read the rest of the report where they said that the record contains no empirical evidence evidence to suggest that independent repair shops are more or less likely than authorized repair shops to compromise or misuse customer data. Further, although access to certain embedded software can introduce new security risks, repair advocates note that they only seek diagnostics and firmware patches. Thus, again, they're smart enough to realize that we are not asking for source code. But more importantly, Remember when there was that line where Charlie Brown was talking in Washington last year where they were saying that we may install TikTok on customers' phones and fear and fear and fear and fear. Fear the independent repair person. And do it under warranty so that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it. The record contains no empirical evidence to suggest that independent repair shops are more or less likely than authorized repair shops to compromise or misuse customer data. And this is something that I mentioned in a video a few weeks ago. There is no special brand of man that works at the Apple store that is different from the brand of men and women that work at independent repair shops. They're not special. They, you know, they, they weren't born from a you know, different sequence of DNA than normal human beings or anything like that. They are just like us. And if there are people that are going to steal your data in independent repair, bet your ass there are people that are going to text themselves raunchy pictures of you for, uh, that, that were on your iPhone when you go to the Apple store. It has happened, and it has made the Washington Post. A few other points that I found... Uh, particularly interesting. Although manufacturers have offered numerous explanations for their repair restrictions, the majority are not supported by the record. So again, one of the things that I always say here is when we are discussing and saying safety, security, uh, safety, security, the, all I ask is a citation, a single citation where the manufacturer's points can you know, be, be tested against reality, and they never provide them. And what I like is that the FTC could tell the majority are not supported by the record. That's a good thing. The next is, at the end, it says, the commission also stands ready to work with legislators, either at the state or federal level, in order to ensure that consumers have choices when they need to repair products that they purchase and own. The commission stands ready to work with legislators, either at the state or federal level, in order to ensure that consumers have choices when they need to repair products that they purchase and own. This is a good thing. Somebody is actually listening. Someone understands the arguments that we've been creating. You know why? Because of you. Because all of you decided to email your local legislator, email your local representative. You attended the FTC Nix to Fix workshop. You submitted evidence. You made sure that they understand the problem. Give yourself a round of applause. I'm serious. I'm going to put a link in the description down below to this report. You read this and you tell me that you don't think things have shifted from where they were one or two or even five years ago when it comes to the government noticing or caring about antitrust. This is awesome. They know. They notice what's going on and they see through the manufacturer's bullshit. This is an amazing day. And none of this could have happened without all of you. So thank you very much for all the work that you've done. Thank you for spreading this information to your friends, your family members, your customers, your vendors, all the people in your life. 
we're making progress and we're getting somewhere. And I'm going to have more surveys for you. I did a survey the other day because, as I said, I have an antitrust attorney that is working closely on the representations that the manufacturers are making. And then we are seeking to gather data from both customers and repair shops, authorized and unauthorized, that specifically cut against the representations made by the manufacturers so that we can present more evidence as to A, what regulations, if any, are being broken, and B, just showcasing that their points are, as they said, not supported by the record. Again, it couldn't happen without all of you. You've all made me in incredibly happy today. So I just wanted to share that with all of you and say thank you so, so much for making this happen. I'll see you all in the next video.